On this episode of Locked On Grizzlies, it is award season, well, pre-All-Star break award season. DeMichael and I are going to hand out Grizzlies MVP so far. We're going to debate Vince Williams Jr. versus G.G. Jackson for most improved player. And then we're going to end the show with our biggest surprise to this point. All that and more on this episode of Locked On Grizzlies. Let's lock in. You are Locked On Grizzlies, your daily Memphis Grizzlies podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It is a totally tubular Thursday here on Locked On Grizzlies. Totally tubular. I'm pretty sure nobody says that anymore, but it's something that I say and you know, I'm, I'm special. I, I'm uh, totally tubular. You never heard that before? I don't even know how to spell well, tubular. <laughs> you, there, you and I are, are different in numerous ways, and that's probably why <laughs> uh, you, you have not heard totally tubular. Uh, but the age is probably the biggest thing. I think I want to say that was like a Ninja Turtle circa 1990 ah, okay. surfer kind of idea. Um, you know, I was three in 1990, and you weren't alive yet. So we don't have to dwell on that reality. Uh, welcome to Lockdown Grizzlies. I am one of your hosts, the very old and very lame Joe Mullinax, joined by the much younger, much cooler DeMichael Cole of the Commercial Appeal there in Memphis, Tennessee. He's the Memphis Grizzlies beat writer for that publication. I've covered the Grizzlies here, there, and everywhere for the last decade plus. Between the two of us, you've come to the right place for Memphis Grizzlies and NBA at large content. And we're not going to yell about Doc Rivers or anything like that on this episode. We know where our bread is buttered, and it's buttered by you, our dear listener, our dear viewer, and, of course, the good folks over at the Locked On Podcast Network. It's also buttered by LinkedIn Jobs. Today's title sponsor helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnNBA. That's LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnNBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Again, we are proud members of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team each and every day. Free and available wherever you get podcasts, like, comment, rate, review, subscribe, all those fun things wherever you get podcasts, Apple, Spotify, and, of course, YouTube. Uh, DeMichael, maybe the J.J. Reddick doc Rivers conversation is a good topic for another episode down the road of Locked On Grizzlies, the, the craziness of that conversation and how media is perceived. But that doesn't necessarily impact us as much. What does impact us is the current situation for the Memphis Grizzlies, right? And how the season has played out to this point. We're going to talk MVP soon here first in the show. Then later on, we'll debate because I feel like it's pretty clearly G.G. Jackson or Vince Williams Jr. for most improved. You could make a smaller argument, and you might do so here in a moment since we haven't talked about who our MVP picks are. Yeah. Uh, it may be one of those two names is one of your picks that we're about to discuss. Um, but if they're not, we'll definitely cover both of those guys later for most improved. And then we'll finish up the season with biggest surprise to this point, non GG Jackson and Vince Williams Jr. division, since obviously we're talking about them for a separate topic. Let's start off with Grizzlies MVP. And DeMichael, I want to start with you because you, you want to start with me? Your, okay. your MVP is yeah. going to be one that is going to make me laugh. And I enjoy laughing. I, I like to giggle and chuckle. And just have a genuine merriment about myself. So whenever you're ready, partner, I would love to hear your MVP of the season so far. Because apparently it's different than mine. I I, I I mean, if it's not different from yours, it's going to really surprise me. But uh, mm. see, I'll, I'll preface it with by saying this here on, on Locked On Grizzlies. We don't have, you know, uh, the same CBA guidelines. Correct. You know, as the NBA, because we, we're not. We're not on a 65 game restriction or anything like that over here. So, with all that being said, my MVP of the season for the Memphis Grizzlies is the same MVP that I picked before the season. It's John Morant. Oh, now, <laughs> now let me. That's fascinating. Now let okay. me explain because all right, that nine game stretch where John hmm. Morant played proved so valuable to this franchise in multiple ways. But here's the number one thing. Joe, you'll remember this very well because you, you see the conversations just like I do. And it wasn't even just in Memphis. This was a, a national conver conversation at one point. Do you remember before John Morant got back? The question was, can John Morant even fix these Memphis Grizzlies? They right. were so bad 
Six and 19, Desmond Bain, Jaron Jackson Jr., even when Marcus Smart was playing the first 10 or so games, they were terrible. Very bad. So it was, can John Morant even fix this team? That was a question. He's hurt now, and guess what? No one is asking that question anymore. The question now is about putting the pieces around him because we know what this team will be when John Morant comes on the floor. So that nine-game stretch that John Morant played proved to be the most valuable stretch of basketball for the Grizzlies this season from the standpoint of he has now given them the confidence and the ability to say, we can still trust the core that we have, and now you can focus on the Vince Williams, the Gigi Jacksons, and all those things. If John Morant doesn't play a game this season, if he you know, has a 25-game suspension and then the shoulder, the shoulder uh, surgery comes sooner and he doesn't play, we don't know a lot. We're questioning if Desmond Bain, Jaron Jackson Jr., and Marcus Smart is enough because when we saw it, it wasn't, and it was concerning. But when we saw John Morant get out there, everybody around him, the levels just, I mean, Zaire Williams looked good. Dez still was hooping. Jaron Jackson Jr. was still playing at the same level. That hasn't always been the case in the past. So this was the first time we saw those guys in terms of Dez and Jaron still play at their elite levels alongside of Ja. And we've always seen the other guys uh, get better around him. You know, uh, the bigs, uh, Zaire, and et cetera. So he's my MVP because the, the question about the future no one's really too worried about that. Now, of course, you, you you want them to hit on the marginal moves to be that championship team. But I don't think anyone's going into next season thinking, oh, boy, we're not going to make the playoffs again. Right. And that is only because of Jai. It's not because of anyone else. I think that that's a very fair argument. I do <laughs> believe that you're on to something there. He's not my pick, but you certainly yeah. make a compelling argument. And I, I could be talked into that if we had a longer discussion about it, probably. The reality is the fact that Ja did what he did. They were six and three. Like it was six all and jokes three. and fun and games and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> oh, the Grizzlies can't actually do this. They were literally on pace to do exactly what they needed to do yeah. to get back in the play in. And then I can only imagine how badly people would have wanted to avoid a nine or 10 seed Memphis Grizzlies Wouldn't in that play in. You would see people losing on purpose. You would see people fighting the very best for the damn six seed in the Western Conference because they would not want to mess in a one-game situation with a healthy Grizzlies roster. Because a healthy Grizzlies roster, as we've seen the last couple of years, you know, give or take a Steven Adams, is a top two or three team in the Western Conference. So yeah. I think that that's a great point. For me, the MVP is Jaron Jackson Jr. Because he's been the steady presence in a gap year, if we're not calling it a lost season anymore, because of the guys that we're about to discuss, Vince Williams Jr., G.G. Jackson, their rise to prominence helping negate the, the misses to this point on Zaire Williams and Jake LaRavia and David Roddy, who's not even on the roster anymore. Jaron Jackson Jr. has enabled this team to remain competitive. He has put them in a position to think that even without Ja and Desmond Bain and Marcus Smart, they still have the capacity to compete because they have at least one all-star level player who has had, by far, his best offensive impact season. Now, maybe he scored more efficiently in the past. He hasn't been asked to do as much in terms of usage, and obviously that impacts him. But whether it's his scoring in isolation as one of the best, and this is not hyperbole, this is true, one of the best isolation scorers in the NBA this season, whether it is his tremendous growth, as a creator of offense for others, leaps and bounds better than he's ever been as a creator of offense in terms of assist percentage. And to your point, you talked about Ja to start the season. My biggest thing for Jaron to start the season was exactly that, yep. seeing him become more of a creator of offense for others, and he has done just that. Would I like the almost seven-foot big to rebound more? Absolutely. Is it a surprise that his defense has tailed off some because of the growth in his offensive expectations? Not at all. I am happy to see him kind of carry the burden, carry the weight. It's Dylan Brooks-esque, to be honest with you, going back to Dylan's rookie season when he was asked to be something that he shouldn't have to be. The same thing's happening to Jaron right now. Jaron, when this team is healthy, is a third scoring option, not the first. 
he's had to do that more and he's grown because of it. And that's a major positive for me. And that's why he's my MVP. I, I, and I completely understand that, you know, uh, Jaron Jackson Jr.'s availability, uh, you know, he's kind of stepped into a leadership role as well in terms of he's the guy on the floor during the games, you know, yelling out the most, uh, the screens and things like mm-hmm. that. Uh, great conversation with these young guys. And uh, he's been available, as you've said. And he's taking this game to another level. I, I have no problem with the pick of Jim Jackson Jr. He is a major piece of this team moving forward. He's probably due for a nice raise in his next extension conversation, which correct Ooh, me if nice I'm wrong. Raise. Yeah, uh, That's coming up this summer, right? He's at least eligible to have I that think, conversation. Or I is think it next summer? Next summer. Yeah, next, next summer. summer. Okay. Mm-hmm. So next summer. So the Grizzlies still have a couple of years with Jaron, uh, which is a good thing because that contract is a bargain compared to other deals <sighs> that have been signed in the NBA. Uh, When we come back here on Locked on Grizzlies, we're going to discuss Vince Williams Jr. and Gigi Jackson, two major surprises for the Grizzlies this year. Which one of them is our pick for most improved player? That's what we're going to talk about next here on Locked on Grizzlies. But first, this episode of Locked on Grizzlies is brought to you by LinkedIn. When you're hiring for small businesses, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team, faster, and for free. Hiring is easy when you have so many quality candidates, a vast network of more than a billion professionals over at LinkedIn. It makes it the best place to hire. And it's so easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. LinkedIn is constantly finding ways to make the process easier. They have even just launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process even more efficient. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NBA. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. When we come back here on Lockdown Grizzlies, it's GG versus Vince, at least for most improved player on Lockdown Grizzlies. Stick with us. Welcome back to Locked On Grizzlies. I am Joe Mullinax, joined by my co-host, Michael Cole, of the Commercial Appeal there in Memphis, Tennessee. Excited to have you with us wherever you're checking out the show, Apple, Spotify, YouTube. Like, comment, rate, review, subscribe, all of those fun things. Friendly reminder that Locked On Sports Today is also an option for you, a national sports 24-7 streaming channel, the first of its kind on YouTube, also on Amazon Fire TV and free Fire TV channels app. Cuts top stories of the day. Local experts have locked on. DeMichael and I were on it just this past uh, couple days ago. Plus, our national shows that cover every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. DeMichael, we've been talking Jaron and Ja as MVPs. The next two guys that we're going to discuss, you could easily make an argument, could also potentially be the MVP of the season so far for the Grizzlies. But we're going to leave that to the tier of the core three. And we'll move a tier down for most improved because these are the two guys that have been the, the most pleasant surprises, right? Sure. The, the biggest positives in this gap year, as we're calling it now. Gigi mm-hmm. Jackson, Vince Williams Jr., both when the season began were expected to spend almost as much time in South Haven with the hustle yeah. as they were with the Grizzlies. And now they are no longer two-way contract players. They are fully contracted guys under, over the next few years. You can add them to the core, right? Maybe they're not Bain and Jaw and Jaron like we just talked about, but they are a tier below that. And the reality that it would take a lot for you to see them moved on from because they're contributors who are also cost controlled. If you had to pick one, yeah. and I realize this is kind of like picking your children. I have three children. <laughs> one. Um, if you had to pick one from mm-hmm. most improved. Who would your selection be, G.G. Jackson or Vince Williams? Man, Joe, it's that's a tough so question. Tough. It, it, it's it's one of it's literally so tough that I was gonna let you go first, and, and, and I will happily go guy. first because I have an answer. Okay, oh, so let's oh, do oh. that. So I'll let's I'll make it. an argument for the one that I, this is who I think deserves it, and you'll just play the devil's advocate role of making mm-hmm. the other argument, even if you don't necessarily agree with me. Okay. Yeah. Or even I'll if let you, you know if I agree. Yeah. Okay. So here's my choice. Are you ready? Yeah. Who you got? Vince Williams Jr. Vince Williams Jr. is the choice because for me, the ceiling of G.G. Jackson was always higher, right? Obviously, they both were second round picks, all that sort of stuff. But it was G.G. Jackson who, as you and Raphael Barlow have discussed on a past episode of Lockdown Grizzlies, 
that was the mm -hmm. number one guy in his class before he reclassified. It was G.G. Jackson who had maturity questions, which seemed to be pretty overblown, right? He does things that a 19-year-old does. He was yeah. fine, suspended yeah. for violating team rules. Immaturity, it seems, is probably his biggest crime so far. Uh, but he, the talent has always been there, right? Yeah. The, the idea yeah. that he could be a productive NBA player, that's not a surprise. Vince Williams Jr., doing what he's doing. I've talked about it here on Locked on Grizzlies before. I have VCU Ram fans. I, I live in the Richmond area, about 20 yeah. minutes away from the Siegel Center where the VCU plays. Season ticket holders coming up to me and saying, what in the world are y'all feeding Vince Williams Jr.? Because mm. he was not that player in college. He wow. can say he was, but people that watched him, coaches that saw a role for him, have seen him in a certain way throughout his career, and he is expanding and exploding in a way that I don't think anybody saw coming. So Gigi always had a ceiling that you maybe you wouldn't expect him to be a sixth man ask bucket getter when he's 19, but you could see that two, three, four years down the road. It's one of the reasons the Grizzlies picked him. Vince Williams Jr. being the guy that you wanted David Roddy or Jake mm, Laravia or even yeah, Zaire yeah. Williams to be, You're that now. is a major yeah. upset. And again, we're talking most improved. For me, it's Vince Williams Jr. Yeah, and that's that's a strong point. You know, when you think about what Vince Williams has given this team, I think of it as he's that puzzle piece that's been missing. Yeah. Uh, and even with Dylan Brooks, you got high-level defense. But Vince Williams is a guy, when he's open, you can relax while the ball's in the air. Like, you, you, that's the best way to put it for me. Like, you, you, you're you not, oh, my goodness, please, please make this shot. Like, this is a consistently good three-point shooter. Uh, that's a big bonus because we know what the defense is. And the rebounding for him, like, he is just – he's the perfect puzzle piece to this team. He rebounds the ball, like, so well, and it kind of makes up – for the, the inefficiencies in rebounding, when you talk about Jaron Jackson Jr., Santi Aldama front court, uh, you got Vince coming down the crash and snagging the ball out of the air with two hands. So he's big in that regard. But I'm going to I'm gonna go Gigi Jackson for a couple reasons here. And the main reason for me is, yeah, you, you mentioned Gigi Jackson offensively has always been gifted. We all knew that. Gigi Jackson has never shot the three-pointer like this in his life, in it's his fair. entire life. Uh, Anthony Carter, new Grizzlies assistant coach, uh, came from the Miami Heat, worked with guys like Max Struess, uh, Duncan Robinson. Uh, yeah, that dude needs a ring. Yeah, the, the, the entire coach. Now, uh, he's not the, the Grizzlies shooting coach, per se, but Gigi Jackson, in a lot of interviews, gives him a lot of credit uh, development wise from kind of helping him tweak his shot a little bit. And that's led to, as Gigi said, it, the best shooting results of his life. That's important to me, Joe, because when you mentioned Gigi's offensive skill set, there were a lot of ways that you could argue that, yes, Gigi's really good, but where does he fit? Because he's kind of a four. He's kind of like your, you know, today your modern four, but Jaron Jackson Jr. is your four right now. So it's like, Okay, uh, where does he fit in that role? Or you look at his his shot making. A lot of it is off the dribble. Well, guess what? You got Desmond Bain, John Morant, and Jaron Jackson Jr. as three guys who are uh, very capable off of the dribble. So when is he going to get off the dribble opportunities? To be efficient with the Grizzlies, he had to improve as a spot-up shooter and take those you know off the dribble chances when they come. And he actually is getting a lot more of them right now, which is why you know, you've heard me say it. And People uh, listening to Locked on Grizzlies have heard me say it as well, that I feel like it'll be good for guys like Gigi to play alongside of Desmond Bain and Marcus Smart for the remainder of this season to get a feel for what that's like for them. But the defensive improvements have been there. Uh, the, the athleticism and all that has always been there. He, he's starting to make better reads. There were a couple reads, you know, in that last Grizzlies game against Giannis, uh, which go which will go unnoticed from, from the regular eye. But Gigi was usually the guy who had to, to, to bring the help, uh, and he would bring it from the corner. He would he would come from the wing. Uh, he was kind of the help defender uh, when the Grizzlies were guarding uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo with Lamar Stevens. So uh, his defense is growing, and here's the, here's the one thing that stands out. It's almost like the players are taught to take it, say this because it, it's kind of funny. Ask anybody on the Grizzlies, like, what impresses you about Gigi Jackson? Anybody. They're all going to say he's coachable. 
And as a coach, you know, I always, when I say these things, I got to go back to your coaching background because uh, every player, I don't think, reacts to coaching the same way. And the way that p- people talk about, you know, Gigi, like, is, you know, he's not afraid of the constructors' cr- criticism. He's the guy you can go up to and say, your defense sucked on that last play. Tell him what to do. And he's going to try to do that the next play. And he's going to come back up to you and say, did I get it right that time? He's that type of guy. So uh, all these older guys appreciate that coachability. Taylor Jenkins appreciates that. And I think that's going to carry him to even more improvement uh, going forward. The two most underrated abilities of any athlete are coachability and availability. Doesn't matter how tremendous you are if you're never on the floor, on the fields, wherever you might be playing. And it also doesn't matter if you're not able to take that criticism and build upon your game. Yeah. Because there are people that see the game, can't necessarily do the physical things that you can do, but can see it in a way that you don't see it and can provide those layers to help you build your skill set. And I think Gigi Jackson is one of those guys that most certainly gets that. So, again, there's not a wrong answer here. I, no. Maybe we just say they're co-most improved. That's probably yeah. what the end result needs to be here. Vince Williams and Gigi Jackson, again, those two guys being what they are, the guy that should be most happy about that is Zach Kleiman because he he mm. almost lets that, lets him off the hook a little bit. They almost do uh, when it comes to the Roddy and LaRavia and Williams Man. selections, at least to this point, right? What do um, the people when, think? Let us know yeah. what the people think. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a great point. So maybe you could break our tie, right? Just hit us up in the comments. Is it Vince Williams Jr. for you? Is it Gigi Jackson? Uh, but again, I'm saying they're co, but I, I'm with Michael. Hit us up in the comments to let you know what you th- let us know what you think. Uh, when we come back here on Locked On Grizzlies, we're going to close out this episode with the biggest surprise so far this season, and a season full of surprises. First, this episode of Locked On Grizzlies is brought to you by FanDuel. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets. With any winning $5 bet, you heard me correct. That is $150 if your bet wins. You can bet on all of your favorite NBA players in t- and teams with quick bets, live same-game parlays, exclusive props, and so much more. With the games getting back underway tonight, the Grizzlies back in action on Friday, it's a great time to visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the N. B A. When we come back, we're closing out this episode talking surprises. Hopefully, there's not too many left in this crazy season. Stick with us. Welcome back to Locked On Grizzlies. I am Joe Molinax, joined by DeMichael Cole of the Commercial Appeal there in Memphis, Tennessee. He's the Memphis Grizzlies beat writer at that publication. I'm thrilled whenever we're able to have him with us. And I'm just as thrilled to have you with us each and every day here on Locked On Grizzlies. We've been talking. MVPs, because I think you can make an argument. Jaron Jackson Jr., John Morant, G.G. Jackson, and Vince Williams Jr. all have some claim to that crown. And I feel like we've argued that pretty well. Not to you know toot our own horn here, DeMichael, but I feel like yeah. we've had a pretty strong episode so far. Um, this last part of the show, I'm throwing you a softball. Because I even when we were discussing before the show recorded uh, what we were going to talk about, I had a feeling that this is going to be a chance for you. You know, people loved my rant on yesterday's show. Yeah, yeah. Um, about the, uh, the trading, the pick, and having another young player. This is a chance for you to go on a bit of a rant because I know there's yeah. something that was a surprise to you at this stage mm. of the season. So your biggest surprise, you're going to go first this time, and maybe yeah. the Michael Cole rant, which is rare on these airways. Look, it, the floor it's, is it's yours, sir. Rare like Mr. Clean with hair when we go to that, man. But, <laughs> but look, it's – it's Steven Adams being traded. And I just I can't make sense of that move. I mean, I, I you know, there are some things that, that I've heard from a standpoint of uh, you know, Steven Adams had there were some things he was unhappy about or whatnot, and but it wasn't from you know multiple people, so it, it pretty much probably could just be rumors. Uh, is in it terms coincidental, of, not to cut you off, is it coincidental mm-hmm. that he just recently posted his goodbye to Memphis two weeks after the trade? Yeah, is that a coincidence, it, or are we on to something there? No, no, I don't think so. I, I saw what you were talking about, but this, what I heard was way before even he, he got traded. It was more aligned with, you know, uh, the injury and things like that, how it was handled uh, from the Grizzly side, how it was handled gotcha. from Steven Adams' side, and just 
you know, how that situation played out in terms of him needing the surgery uh, later on down the road and missing this season too. Uh, just some disconnect. I say the better way to put it was some disconnect between the Grizzlies and Steven Adams on how that was handled. Now, the trade, get into that. Uh, I just, I can't make sense of it because right now, Joe, if you look at the pieces, we're we're literally stuck talking about the Grizzlies using a first round pick to guard Anthony Davis, Rudy Gobert, bang with Ivisa Zubak next season for the Grizzlies to win a championship. That's that's what we're talking about right now, uh, because of the simple fact that uh, the Grizzlies made a trade, and again, money had to be moved. I get it, but why Stephen Adams? If if you believe, like Zach Kleiman pretty much said, yo, know, and even after he was traded, I listened to Rafael Sloan, the uh, Houston uh, GM, talk about it as well. They said that Steven Adams is ahead of schedule. Things are looking up on that end. So don't hit me with, the, oh, they probably weren't 100% sure. No, that's not it. That's not it. I've said it since last year. What stood out to me, what made the Grizzlies so good was game over name. Game over name. It wasn't five all-stars in a lineup. It was players who were the best at what they did. And now <laughs> you look at what John Morant is one of the best at. Desmond Bain is one of the best shooters in the world. Uh, Vince Williams eventually is going to be one of the better perimeter defenders in the world. Marcus Smart is already one of the better, better uh, perimeter defenders in the world. Jaron Jackson Jr. is one of the best rim-protecting shot blockers. Uh, one of the best isolation scorers now, as we just found out as well. There's this big glaring weakness now with rebounding. And it would not have been a weakness. Matter of fact, it would have been a strength. The Grizzlies were top offensive rebounding team in the NBA. The first year Steven Adams was here, and they were the top offensive rebounding team before he got hurt uh, in January of 2023. I can't make sense of it, Joe. I knew you had to move some money. But you've heard me say it. Luke Kennard's contract would have made sense. I mean, I'm not a fan of moving Brandon Clark, but it's another sizable contract. You could have packaged a couple guys and and maybe gave up. I would have packaged a couple of the young guys and sent the first round pick to someone just to say, hey, we want to attach these players. We'll give you a first round pick on top of it. I wouldn't have moved Stephen Adams. This was a championship piece for you. I, I really think this was a championship piece. And now that you've traded Stephen Adams, you have this big glaring hole when it comes to rebounding. And there's no easy fix to it. There are only a couple guys who are probably going to be available that are just plus plus rebounders like that. And that doesn't even mean I, we haven't even got into the screen setting and uh, the playmaking ability and, and all of that good stuff that he brought to the table. The Look at Jaren's uh, block numbers. And, it's, and of course, his offensive usage is a big reason why. But another reason is the fact that Steven Adams is not there on the back line anymore. It, it, it is kind of limiting his ability to freelance and things like that. He's playing the five more, which is putting him in defensive, different defensive positions, which is leading to less blocks as well. Man, I, I can't make sense of it, Joe. There's, there's no way in the world I would have traded Steven Adams. This was the fifth starter for you on a potential championship team. I think you're on to something. And while I'm, that's not my surprise, I knew you were going to pick that. And by the way, your rants are much calmer than mine. That was still a rant, but yeah, it was, yeah, it's, not, you, you didn't yell or raise your voice, which I'm, I'm impressed by. Calm, cool, and collected. I kept it together. Kept together. You did. I don't keep it together when I, <laughs> um, for me, I, it, it's tied to that because I'm not surprised that they traded Steven Adams. If it was a choice between Adams and Kennard, I would have chosen to keep Kennard, but I'm uh, with you. Yeah. On the Adams' importance, I think your concerns about Kennard are fair. I, I, that, that could be something we talk about maybe in the off season. Kind yeah, of for sure. that once we see how they address all these things, because it's an important summer, and I think Zach Kleiman knows that. My surprise would tie into yours, and in that it's trade deadline related. I'm surprised that it's Roddy that was sent out, David Roddy, mm -hmm. and not Laravia and Williams, because. To me, Roddy was the most serviceable of the three. But in hindsight, that surprise probably shouldn't have been there because, to your point, what you just mentioned a moment ago, Roddy is probably the only guy that was worth anything in a trade at this stage yeah, yeah. because of what Zaire has been as a disappointing player. He's shown flashes. Again, the, the game before the All-Star break was a great example yeah. of that. But they're few and far between. 
Jake LaRavia has barely been on the court. And when he has been on the court, he has not produced at the NBA level, at least. I know he's had a longer run in the G League. Mm -hmm. So what are you getting for those guys? You would have had to have given up an asset. Now, where I agree with you is I would have done exactly what you just said. I would have given up one or two even first-round picks. Kept Steven Adams to bring in somebody. you got to pay to play at some point, Mike. We talked about that yesterday. Are you in a title contending window or not? I'm with you. Right? So in that in that way, and I'm trying to be consistent, I'm crazy. People can yell at me all they want, but I'm <laughs> I'm at least consistent, right? Are you in a title contending window or not? If you are, Zaire Williams and Jake LaRavia almost certainly are not going to help you in that title contending window. You take two first round picks, pair those guys together, bring in somebody that's going to help you. And you free up money. And you find a way to keep Adams and Kennard, and you go into next season saying, here's our team, let's play, right? You get as close to that apron conversation as you can. Uh, they're going into the offseason with more flexibility. All the arguments for that make sense to me. But again, you're going to hear me ad nauseum over the next six months. Are you a title contender or not? If you're a title contender, start acting like it. To their credit, yeah. they acted like it last offseason, acquiring Marcus Smart. That was something that a title contending team would do, right? Yep. Now, the next step to that is how do you replace Steven Adams, who shout out to Funaki Stats on, on Twitter. Uh, shout out to my guy. The Grizzlies yeah. are going are gonna to miss Steven Adams more than I think most people realize. Yeah. You and I know. Uh-huh. Um, again, I like Luke Kennard because you literally can make an argument he's a top 10 three-point shooter of all time. Yeah. Uh, and it's hard for me to trade that guy. But Steven Adams did so much to help winning basketball in Memphis. They have to figure out a way to replace him. And that's going to be a process over the next few months. People don't remember. This team was battling the Nuggets for the number one seed. It was back and forth. I remember. January 2023, Grizzlies won. Nuggets won. It was – they were tit for tat with the Nuggets. For the and I hope seat. that we're. I hope that it's not one of those thirty for thirties in twenty years, mm. where, where they're interviewing you, not me. They'd be interviewing you <laughs> uh, about how close the Grizzlies were to being a dynasty and it falling apart. It feels like this is a pivotal off season for that. I think we can agree that they need to find a way as money gets tighter to pivot around their new core. Otherwise, the window may have already closed. That's crazy to say out loud, but championship windows don't just stay open, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, it that's comes the down Oklahoma to, City Thunder. Yeah. That's exactly right. So it'll be interesting to see how it all shakes out over the next few months. Uh, thank you guys so much for checking out Locked On Grizzlies, whether it's on YouTube, Apple, Spotify, wherever you get podcasts. Like, comment, rate, review, subscribe. Make us a part of your Grizzlies and NBA content consumption each and every day. Remember Locked On Sports Today over on YouTube, also on Fire TV in the free channel section. Experts, local experts like DeMichael and myself. You also have our national shows. Check out Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and then over on Amazon Fire TV. Uh, DeMichael, obviously, basketball is back for the Grizzlies on Friday. On our next episode, we can preview Grizzlies Clippers. And then maybe on a more macro scale, preview the remaining schedule, right? What it looks like for Memphis, what we expect from them the rest of the way. Maybe since I know they practice on Thursday, they practice today. Yeah. Uh, you could perhaps get an update in terms of injuries and, and see oh, a, for a sure. little bit of a better timeline of when these guys may come back. Maybe an overall post All Star preview on Friday. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you just hit on it. We got a lot we can discuss for Friday's show, but but definitely uh, the team will practice. So we'll have updates, uh, whether that's injuries, whether it's just, you know, who's available, uh, what right. the guys look like, what they've been up to. Uh, but more importantly, the injuries. I know everyone wants to know uh, the latest. You know, Marcus Smart, Desmond Bain, uh, Jake Laravia to a lesser degree. Brandon Clark looks pretty Brandon. good at Turks and Caicos. Yeah, throwing down dunks. Uh, medical science. Team. Shout yeah, out medical science. Is. Shout out medical science. <laughs> Yo, Joe Mullinax doubted you for a second. I, I he's did. He's a believer. I he's did. a believer now. That's, that's all that matters. So, uh, but yeah, injury updates more than anything. We'll definitely get the latest on those guys. Going to check all that out and more on our next episode of Locked On Grizzlies. For DeMichael Cole, I am Joe Molinax. Stay locked in. Apple, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you get podcasts. Like, comment, rate, review, subscribe. Until our Friday show, have a good one. Stay safe out there.